Hi, so I thought while we're waiting for the capacitor to arrive, uh, should arrive today, we'll just have a look over the uh, main boards here. This is the one that's the main control board that I showed you briefly in the last video. Quick overview, we've got our connector here. Now this one actually says motor output, as you can see there, but it's a bit misleading because it is actually the input power supply into this board. Um, as I've discovered, the main power supply is contained on the motor driver board. So this um, connector is providing the power into this board, but also the control out to the uh, control parts on that board there. we got here is a uh, connector port for a little micro switch. It's uh, basically so if you take the air filter out, it turns the fan off. So that's just to detect if the filter's in. Here we've got our anion output that basically goes to a small uh, plasma generator which I believe negatively uh, charges the uh, molecules in the air and it also can um, kill certain bacteria etc as far as I'm aware. Some general surface mount stuff, a few electrolytic capacitors, they look fine, this board looks fine to me, everything seems to be working. A little beeper out there, this here must be our uh, air quality sensor, I'm not quite sure what it is or anything. Um, but that must be what that is. Now down here, this is interesting, I'll take you in a bit closer. Now sorry about the shakiness, I'm having to hold this quite close to the camera. This is a Samsung uh, chip here, it's the 3F9488XZZQ288. Now interesting, I can't seem to find a data sheet on that at all. Um, but when I looked it up, uh, Alibaba's website was listing one um, for sell on there and put it down as being suitable for mp4 players so um, yeah interesting I'm not quite sure why they chose that one um, obviously it's just being used to you know control what goes on etc uh, with the uh, the air sensor etc but yeah interesting and then over here this little one down here this is the CP2532 uh, or 2528, I can't remember now, have a closer look. I've got the data sheet out for it. I can't seem to get the reading off that. Anyway, that one there is a uh, 12 slash 8 channels capacitive touch detection device. So this uh, panel is uh, touch sensitive, uh, the controls are touch sensitive, so that's what's uh, driving that one there. Uh, it's quite an interesting chip, it's got SPI, I squared C, etc. built into it. Yeah, so that one's what's controlling the uh, the touch sensitive controls on the other side of the board. Alright, so we'll take a look over at the other side here. Alright, so this is the uh, underside or front side of the board, depending on how you look at it. This is the bit that goes up against the case. Now on here, we got lots and lots of LEDs. This thing is a bit overboard on them. It's a bit annoying as well because I have it in a bedroom and it just illuminates blue very brightly during the night. So I have to like chuck a t-shirt over it or something to try and uh, uh, take some of the light out. Otherwise, it interrupts my sleep. Quite interesting uh, with all the black lines and everything going around where the switches uh, will be as such on the uh, front panel. I'm not sure if the black lines are um, just markings or if it's actually traces underneath it for the capacitive touch. I uh, can't quite see the tracing so I'm not sure how they're, how they're doing it, but it's quite groovy anyway. Now having a closer look at this uh, air sensor here, I can see the markings TP-4 on it. So I've had a look online, um, I can't find a Pacific TP4 but I found a TP-401A so I'm thinking that's possibly uh, what it is. Uh, basically it says it's very sensitive to many air contaminating gases or toxic gases of low concentrations. These gases are secondhand smoke, carbon monoxide, wine, brackets alcohol, volatiles of cosmetics, acetone, thinner, insecticide, correction fluid, benzene and formaldehyde and so on. So quite a wide range of things that it can detect. I know it's definitely very sensitive. You spray a bit of deodorant in another room and it doesn't take long before this thing shoots to red and uh, starts turning the fan on pretty high. So that's just a general overview of this main board here. 
Um, I'll link in the data sheets etc for what I found will be linked in down below um, if you're interested in having a look at those yourself. Um, now we'll go and have a look at the other board. It's a bit annoying because I can't actually get it off uh, the rest of the parts but we'll see if we can get that in shot and have a closer look at what that's got on it. Alright, so here's the other board. Um, we saw this one in my last video. The heat sink here. This is obviously again a reminder where the capacitor was taken from, which I'm hoping is definitely the problem. Uh, I've got a few various parts. This is actually the main uh, 230 volt supplies coming in here. Nice to see they've elastic that down. A few uh, capacitors, there's a uh, mob filters we've got here is our diode bridge uh, to rectify uh, the signals of DC. Um, this is the cable connection here that goes out um, and then plugs into the other board. Obviously takes the supply out, it's 12 volt output as you can probably see down there. And then has the input coming back into this board. Got our header pins there which um, obviously are interfacing with this chip down here. Now I've looked this one up, this is the FCM8531 and it's a Fairchild, it's uh, MCU embedded and configurable three phase PMSM slash BLDC motor controller. Now I'll link in the uh, data sheet uh, below for this one as well. It says the advantage of the SCM8531's parallel core processors is that two processors can work independently and complement each other. The AMC process is the tasks dedicated for motor controls, such as the motor control algorithms, PWN controls, current sensing, real-time overcurrent protection and motor angle calculation. The embedded MCU provides motor control commands to the AMC to perform motor control activities through a communication interface, etc, etc. Quite an interesting little device, uh, it's got a full duplex serial interface, UART. We've got SPI as well. Uh, it's got 12 kilobytes of flash program memory and 256 plus 1 kilobytes of SD RAM for data memory. So interesting little thing. Obviously, uh, you can program it yourself. So I don't know if they program that directly or if they're if it's um, you know having uh, instructions sent to it and sort of programmed on the fly from the existing board. Now on the underside of the board here, nothing to see at all, it's just single sided board. And then we've got a chip underneath here, so I'll whip that heat sink off and we'll have a look at that. The thing to note with this one is I took the, um, the impeller, what if you call it, assembly off the uh, motor and um, had a look at the uh, motor that's in it. It's a 230 volt DC motor, so um, that's interesting, I would have thought it would have been an AC motor. Um, that's kind of what was bringing me to believe that this uh, capacitor was sort of the starting capacitor for the motor. I don't know if you need that with DC motors as well. I'm not uh, too sure on that myself. But anyway, I did measure the um, voltage across these two points. It's interesting. I mean, it will still come on and do what it was doing before. It just sort of clicks the fan a couple of times and doesn't do anything else. Uh, without having a capacitor in there and it's about 347 volts um, across there so it's obviously stepping up the voltage from the 230 supply. Uh, it's a lovely lovely compound, let's get that taken off. Okay so I've got the uh, heatsink off there and uh, wiped the heatsink compound off. Um, now this device here, this is a FSB 50550A if I read that correctly um, and apparently this is a three phase inverter driver for small power AC motor drives so yeah interesting maybe the labeling on the motor saying it's a 230 volt DC is incorrect maybe it is AC um, I don't know I would need to I suppose check the uh, voltage coming out to the motor and see if the voltage that's coming out is AC or DC. As I think actually that was, um, I think it was DC anyway, I can't remember now, sorry, across the um, capacitor where that is, I'll have to do some further checks on that. So that's what that is. So then, yeah, not much to this board really. Um, but yeah, so quite some complex stuff in a way going on that you've got a, a processor on the other board 
and then you've got this uh, other processor here as well um, driving the motor controller for the fan. So hopefully when the capacitor arrives that will solve the problem. I've looked at the rest of these caps, they look okay uh, visually. Um, like I say, I mean everything else comes on fine, it doesn't uh, do anything dodgy or anything it shouldn't do apart from the fact that it won't power the fan up. So I'm kind of just hoping that that's what's uh, going on there and that will be an easy fix. Um, obviously if it does fix it, brilliant, um, but it's uh, a shame that it's happened in the first place, um, especially since it's supposed to have a three year guarantee, which of course would indicate that fellows themselves are you know, anticipating that the product should last three years, I would guess, but obviously um, yeah, failing after not long after a year is uh, not very good. I mean it does run 24 hours a day, it's, it's designed to run 24 hours a day, so yeah, you know, surprised they didn't put in better caps in the first place, really. So I'll uh, put some more heatsink compound, reattach that, and then await the capacitor. It should be arriving today, actually, um, at some point. Um, order one from uh, Farnell uh, Rubicon. One they I was going to get Nippon Chemical, but they didn't have any unless I wanted 250 of them, uh, which I don't. I only want one, thank you. So. Uh, Yep, once I get that, I'll uh, pop that in and we will see if it works. So that will be coming up in part three. Thank you for watching. Cheers.